Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Community Fortress. This is the Fortress of Mason Tower, and this was sent in on the Discord by profile name. If you would like to send in a fortress for me to have a look at on the show, you can do that via my Discord. There's a link down in the description. Simply join the Discord and uh, send in your save file via this file sharing service of your choice or by simply uploading it directly. I recommend zipping the folder as it will not share as easily otherwise, and then simply share it. Keep an eye on what other people are doing, share a couple screens, screenshots and a brief description of your fortress alongside of uh, uh, permission to use it in a video if you would like me to have a look at it. Uh, this particular fortress uh, is kind of located at the very center here of this very small map. And once again, it's the fortress of Mason Tower of the Abyssal Walls of the Lash of Roasting. Now, this is kind of an interesting little two-parter fortress. It's kind of got two major things. It's got a big underground section as well as a big above-ground section and also a toy that we get to play with at the very end. The, the toy specifically is a uh, magma piston, so you get to see one of those in action, which should be a bit of fun if nothing else. Now, uh, initially we have this kind of lovely little minecart set up out here, um, which I'm not entirely certain what it's transporting. I mean, if I go in here, as you can see, there's uh, quite a few different of, difference of these, but uh, it perhaps is lumber top or lumber bottom. It's, it's a little hard to tell. I mean, it does, in fact, have lumber in it. Uh, it seems like it kind of goes this way and then kind of goes down and into the fortress and then down to here. So I'm assuming this is lumber bottom and then that would be lumber top, but it's a, it's, it's a little hard to tell. It's a, it's a, it's a cute little minecart rail nonetheless and uh, per perhaps we could theoretically get a dwarf to push something but I just kind of want to move up the up this uh, tower initially so as we move up the tower you can see there's a dining hall uh, several different offices as well as just some unused space, a very small compact library, and uh, a little bit more library space, and a little bit more library space. Uh, the library itself, if you actually take a real quick peek at it, uh, appears to have 223 books in total, which is quite well appointed. Uh, and then as we move up, the oh, there there is a, a couple of bedrooms, which... <clears throat> do not appear to be assigned to many people, although these lower ones appear to be assigned to uh, dwarves of importance, I would assume, because it is very much kind of its own space, kind of uh, secluded from the rest of the fortress. And then we have this outdoor area with these uh, images or statues of giant king snakes, which are pretty cool, or king cobra, not king snakes. Uh, the giant king cobra on the item is a rendition of the fenced whip, an image of the giant king cobra. It was commissioned, so somebody must like giant king cobras. And then there's a dead cat skeleton up there, so uh, that probably needs to be collected. Uh, up here, a little further up, we have another dining hall, and uh, then almost all the way up at the top, we have this tiny little attic thing. I personally would put something up here, like some engravings, or like maybe just put some statues or some loose items to make it look like a, a, a lived-in attic, but that's just me. Uh, and then a, a bedroom up here um, for the captain of the guard, if I'm not mistaken there. Lo looks like the... Uh, no, it is not the captain of the guard. It is somebody else... Uh, who I'm not entirely sure of. It, it may be the... Oh, it's, it's it's the Count probably gets the, the top up here. So as, as we scroll down, um, there is way down into the fortress, so we're going to kind of follow these little minecart routes. There's lots and lots of ramps. Very much a fan of ramps, this fortress seems to be. Over here, there is also a area that... Uh, for, for flowing water down and into the fortress. So uh, there's a, a little water reservoir down here, which I'm assuming is what they filled. Um... It's hard, it's hard to tell if they're trying to grow stuff down here or, or if they had other plans for this. Uh, and then down here, this is just kind of a little space that goes down into uh, various different waterlogged areas. And then there's uh, this area here, which has water on it, which I'm assuming they're using to make obsidian. Uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a little hard to tell. Uh, this right here is the obsidian piston, which I will be showing you in a minute. And then as, as if we go back up a little ways, uh, we can kind of look at the uh, cavern layout itself. Uh, there is some construction down here. So down here we have this kind of little trap corridor, uh, as, as well as a small meeting hall and a space for, for dwarves to exist. We, we have some more meeting halls and then a very large open space down here. Again, a don't know what this is for, but uh, very large open space. Very much kind of feels like a future farming area. Lots and lots of water in the area. I'm assuming this is going to be for growing underground trees 
Uh, and as we move down, I feel like I missed a layer, but... Uh, and then as we move down, there's large stockpile layers and plenty of minecart tracks for transporting goods from place to place. We have a uh, large crafting area filled with different uh, furnaces and, you know, your different craft store shops and kind of everything going on down here. Uh, lots and lots of engravings on the floor in here as well, just up on this kind of corner bit, which is the Chambers of Crystal, which appears to be a uh, craft dwarfs guild. Uh, and then down here we have uh, stone storage and supply and uh, over here we have a refuse stockpile. And then as we move down, there's more stone storage and more stone storage. And up here is all the bedrooms. So the, these bedrooms are... Uh, I wouldn't do bedrooms like this, but the way these bedrooms work is each... Uh, or, uh, where, where's the actual entry layer to this? There has to be an entry layer somewhere. Oh, it's down at the bottom. So it, it, the, the way this works is uh, you get to run through uh, Eurist's bedroom, I guess, to get to your bedroom. But, you know, it saves you from having to make doors. They're very nice and big. I'm sure the dwarves don't mind them. But uh, a very efficient way of doing bedrooms. Not the most aesthetically pleasing. Not a way I would do bedrooms. But, you know, it's an interesting way of doing things. Like to see new ideas. Uh, down here, there's a, a small spot for lava. And, of course, a way of actually draining the lava off the map in case uh, of oopsie, I would assume as well as all of the forges on top of it. Um, again, not the most aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing, but very effective mechanically. And then uh, a little lower down here, we have uh, more bedrooms and uh, spaces uh, for, for, for the dwarves to socialize. We have a, a small temple and uh, two dining halls side by side. One of them is assigned, one of them isn't. Then we got a billion and a half levers for every different thing. And then we got this very important lever here, right, which is the drop the piston lever. Uh, it's like dropping the base, but for more pistony. Uh, and then as we move our way down, uh, we eventually uh, encounter the coffin layer, which just has the exact same setup as the bedrooms, where it starts on a layer and there's one hallway that goes through it, and then it's just up and down, very vertical. And uh, then as we scroll down, 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 down. Also, I, I'd be curious to know what year this fortress started on, because um, it, uh, you know, it's it's the year 290. Um, and we have 165 dwarves, so I it, I think it's either 40 years old or they started on a weird year. Uh, and then down here we have uh, the the spot to fill the piston, which is down at the bottom here. And then uh, as as we go down a little ways, there's drainage for the piston, and that appears to be as far down as things have gone, unless somebody's fallen in here, which is definitely a possibility. <laughs> Somebody fell in here, and uh, may, may, maybe we dis discovered uh, stuff down in the magma sea that, or they just kind of peeped in when they uh, dug in the side door. So um, let's drop this piston, shall we? Down at the very, very, very bottom of this piston um, is this, which is a uh, little dolomite pillar and if i jump up to here it's got this drop the piston lever so i'm going to um pull this lever and we're going to wait until a dwarf shows up and then when a dwarf shows up to pull this lever i'm going to pause the game and move it forward one turn at a time while looking at the top of the piston to show you exactly what a what a, a piston does so it's now paused i'm going to zoom up to the top of here and uh, I have it bound to the equals key, but you can bound, bind it to whatever you want. We're just going to hit equals, 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 equals. Oh, and there it goes. It drops down a layer, and then it teleports the lava to the top. So essentially, the, the way a, a piston works is it... Um, it uh, forces all of the lava from underneath all the way to the top of the item. And then I guess the way that this would work is you drain uh, the lava around, from around the sides. You dig out underneath this, set up another... Um what's the word? Uh, a pillar underneath it, and then up here all the way at the top, where when once we see it, I'm going to unpause the game again. Um, I'm assuming that right above here you would then uh, drop this water onto it, uh, and then mine out the obsidian, leave the piece at the top, and then do it again. So it falls, and then uh, up here, I could drop this, which is connected right here. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to unpause this here and let's see let's see this water in action. We wait now and then I'm assuming you would drop these or maybe drain it out the side there for for the remainder. Um so now we just need to wait for the lever to be pulled. A beautiful factory and, and a very nice setup. I, I personally don't generally use pistons because I find they just take too long. <laughs> um but I I have a huge amount of respect for anybody who builds uh Pistons in Dwarf Fortress. It appears that some scholars gone berserk. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, I'm, sh I'm sure that he's fine. I, I wouldn't worry too much about this scholar. What's the status of this lever? 
You've been pulled yet? Nope. Okay. Well, I will cue that up. Uh, in before, like, the entire fort dies while I'm just, like, sitting here staring at this piston. Uh, okay. Well, it's, it appears that the, the, the angry scholar has been struck down. So everything is fine. I would just like to confirm that everything is fine. Um, the lever's been pulled, and... Uh, no, no, no bridge open? Did I pull the... Maybe I need to pull it again. Let's try pulling it again. See what happens here. Because there definitely is water on here. Two of seven. That should be more than enough. There it goes. Look at that. So then now I guess what you would do is you would uh, jump over to the piston uh, top drain. And we'd pull that. And just let the excess lava flow off. And then uh, you've got your resetted piston. Yeah. Yeah. Cool little toy. I, I I like this. This is this is neat. I it's I think this is actually the first fully functioning lava piston I've seen in this version of the game that I've gotten to play with specifically because I haven't built one and this is the first one I've seen on this particular series. Thank you very much once again to uh to uh profile name one for sending in this fortress of Mason Tower and uh thank you very much to everybody who takes part in this show and lets me have a look at your forts because. You know, that's like, what? what is DF if we if we can't, you know, have a look at uh, creations that people have made? If you would like to send in a, a, a fort for me to have a look at on this show, simply uh, submit it to my Discord once again. And uh, if you would like to support me or this channel directly, you can do that via Patreon. That's patreon.com slash B-L-I-N-D-I-R-L. And uh, if you would like to uh, p pick up a piece of merchandise to maybe show off that you enjoy my stuff, I'm dropping some new merch on the first of next month, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, uh, until then, I've got a t-shirt, a hoodie, and a mug. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.